Berlin is the capital city of Germany with a population of 3.57 million. According to this model split study, 27% of trips made in Berlin are by public transport. In this video, we'll explore the history of this interesting public transport system which keeps Berlin moving every single day. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing to this channel, it's free and it helps out a lot. Thanks and on to the video. Oh, and sorry if I butcher any pronunciations. Our journey starts around the year 1200 when the city, or should I say cities, were founded. Around 1200, the cities of Berlin and Köln were founded. Berlin was located on the northern shore of the Spree River, while Köln was located on the Spree Insel, an island in the river. The two cities were very small and compact, so there was no need for regular scheduled public transit service. The two cities merged into one in 1710, creating the single city of Berlin. There were some attempts at public transit service, like sedan chairs in the 17th and 18th centuries, but these were only for the very wealthy. In 1825, the city borders looked like this. In the same year, regular scheduled omnibus service was established between Berlin's Brandenburger Tor, one of 18 gates to the city, to the then independent town of Charlottenburg. This was the first truly public transport service established in Berlin. The many omnibus operators later merged into the Allgemeine Berliner Omnibus Aktiengesellschaft Company, or ABOAG for short, which will later be part of the current public transport company, the BVG. Horse-drawn tram lines began to be established in 1865. On the 30th of June 1865, the first line was opened, leading from Berlin to Charlottenburg. In 1879, Werner von Siemens unveiled the first electric tram model. In 1881, Siemens' company, Siemens und Halske, started operating the first electric tram line in the world. Through the 1880s, Siemens und Halske was contracted by the horse-drawn tram operators to electrify their lines. In 1902, the last horse-drawn tram line was decommissioned and replaced with an electric tram. On the 10th of September 1896, construction of the first U-Bahn or Metro line started. From now on, I'll use the terms U-Bahn and Metro interchangeably. The line was partially elevated above the city and partially underground. It originally led from Potsdamer Platz to Stellauer Tor. Construction took six years and in 1902 the U1 metro line started operations. Among the first metro train conductors was Martin de Bobe. He was a man from Cameroon brought to Germany in 1896 as part of the Great Industrial Exposition in Berlin. De Bobe was there to show African daily life. After the exhibition ended, the Bobe stayed in Germany and found work. When the U1 metro line opened, he became the first African train conductor and later the first African train driver in Germany. Developments continued and in 1912 a trolleybus line was opened in Steglitz, which is now a part of Berlin. The vehicles could go up to 25 km or 15.5 miles per hour and they could carry 16 passengers. Sadly, operations ended just two years later, in 1914, due to the breakout of World War I. By 1913, the Siemens und Halske company had built five metro lines in and around the city. World War I was a turbulent time for Germany and for its public transport systems. Many transit workers, like train and bus drivers and conductors, among others, were drafted to the front. The German government believed that the war would be over quickly, but as we all know, with the benefit of hindsight, that didn't happen. Construction of numerous metro lines started in 1914, but as the war dragged on and because the construction severely lacked materials and labor, the new lines faced several delays. On the 8th of August 1924, the S-Bahn entered service. The Berlin S-Bahn is a mix between a commuter train and a metro system. At first, the trains were steam-powered, however, the steam-powered rolling stock was quickly replaced by electric trains. In 1928, the system was completely electrified. In 1928, the many public transport companies merged into a single company, the Berliner Verkehrsaktiengesellschaft. The company, known as the BVG, has stayed as the operator of public transport services to this day. By 1930, the four original metro lines were almost completed. In 1933, the Nazi party came into power. The Nazis changed two station names. Reichskanzlerplatz was renamed to Adolf Hitlerplatz after the dictator himself. Schönhauser Tor station was renamed to Horst Wesselplatz after an officer of the Nazi paramilitary group, the SA. 
In 1945, the Nazis lost the war and were deposed. However, the occupation of Berlin by the Allies created more problems that needed to be solved. After 1945, Berlin was split into four occupation zones. Public transport infrastructure was eventually rebuilt and at first ran as normal. Oversight over the public transport system was partitioned between the western zones, which merged into West Berlin in 1948, and the Soviet-controlled eastern zone, known as East Berlin. The BVG company was also split into BVG West and BVG Ost. The S-Bahn was an exception. Initially, the whole S-Bahn system was operated by East Berlin, even the lines that ran in the west. Citizens of each zone could freely move and take transit between the occupation zones. Many East Berliners took advantage of this hole in the developing Iron Curtain to escape to the wealthier Democratic West. This loophole was closed in 1961 with the construction of the Berlin Wall. This border closure also affected public transit lines. Many West Berliners boycotted the S-Bahn in 1961 because they didn't want to fund the construction of the Berlin Wall. U-Bahn and S-Bahn lines were split. Three U-Bahn metro lines briefly went through East Berlin before continuing in West Berlin. This problem was solved by creating ghost stations. This was the nickname given to stations that were close to trains passing through. One station, Friedrichstrasse, remained open as a border checkpoint. The two halves of Berlin developed their transit systems very differently. West Berlin looked to the west for inspiration and began tearing out their tram tracks in favor of buses and private cars. West Berlin also adopted double-decker buses at this time. Meanwhile, East Berlin looked to the east for inspiration and they expanded their tram network and introduced trolley buses. In 1980, workers of the West Berlin S-Bahn striked. In response, the western section of the S-Bahn was taken over by BVG West. Extensions to existing metro lines and brand new metro lines were built at this time. In 1973, the U5 line was extended to Tierpark and in 1976, the U9 line was opened, leading from Oslor Strasse to Radhaus Steglitz. In 1984, the U7 line was extended to Spandau. In 1989, the Berlin Wall finally fell, starting the reunification process in Berlin and Germany as a whole. In 1990, the city officially merged into one. The interconnection of the public transit system, which had been cut in half for almost 30 years, followed soon after. Ghost stations were reopened and in 1992 the U2 line was restored and opened. In 1994, S-Bahn services came under the control of Deutsche Bahn, Germany's national rail operator. The U1 line was connected with its eastern part again in 1995. In the same year, trams returned to Western Berlin. The tram network of Berlin continued to grow and is still growing to this day. After the 90s, expansion slowed down. The next big development came in 2006 with the opening of the Berlin Hauptbahnhof or Berlin Main Train Station. This station is the largest train station in Europe, boasting 14 platforms, S-Bahn and U-Bahn connections. In 2017, a cable car was built between Kienberg Park and Gärten der Welt. The last U-Bahn extension completed was the extension of the U-5 line to Berlin Hauptbahnhof, only completed in 2020. The current public transport network of Berlin looks like this. It is an extensive network combining buses, trams, trains of all kinds, a few ferries and a cable car to form a really great transit experience. I hope that the network continues to grow and improve into the future. Thank you for watching to the end, this has been Tramly and see you next week. Bye.